everyone and uh, welcome to our first online studio class of the year. I am really excited. We've had an excellent first week of lessons and today we are going to just go over a little bit uh, between you and your parents uh, some things that are going to help you when you're practicing at home this year. Okay, so the video is divided into a few different chunks. I'd like you to watch it together with your mom or dad and I want you guys to see how many of these things you can do this year. It's going to help you practice a lot. Alright, so the first thing that your mom and dad and you are going to learn about today is the practice environment. So the practice environment just means where you practice when you're at home, okay? If you are in your first year of lessons, it's okay if you only have a keyboard, if it's not a full size. But if you're in your second year of lessons or more, you need to have a full 88 key piano with weighted keys and a pedal at minimum. Okay? If you have an acoustic piano, that piano needs to be tuned at least once a year. All right. So if you have an acoustic piano and you haven't gotten it tuned in a while, now would be a great time to call your piano technician and make sure that that's done. Because that way, your piano is going to sound the same as my piano and you won't get confused when you're practicing at home. All right. The second thing you should know about the practice environment is we want to make sure you have room to sit. So we don't want the piano squeezed up against the wall or the back of the couch or your bed where you can't slide back and forth properly. We want to make sure that you have room. The second thing you're going to need is a footstool and something to make the bench higher or lower if you need. It could be a cushion, it could be some books, um, it could be a platform underneath the bench. And you're going to need those things because you need to make sure you have good seating position and we'll talk about that later. The third thing you want is you want it to be a little So the next thing we're going to talk about today is seating position. Seating position is one of the most important parts of piano and we have to get it right from the very beginning. If we don't, no matter what exercises I do or, or what kind of work I do with you, you're going to have trouble. Okay? So we need to make sure that your seating position is correct, not just in lessons, but at home as well. So the first thing you need to know is how high you need to be at the piano. For most kids under the age of 10, we say that we want to make sure that your belly button is on a level with the keys. Alright, so you're going to find that actually that's a lot higher than you think it is. So I would really suggest that you find a cushion or some books um, or you could put a platform or some 2 by 4s under your piano bench to raise it up. And then you can measure belly button to the top of the keys. For older students, what we're actually looking for is we're looking for your arm length, your elbow to your shoulder. We want that elbow to be such that when you put your hands on the keys, that you are just a tiny bit above level. Okay, you can see how mine is. Okay, so that's what you're looking for. And that means that you may need to adjust the bench as necessary. Your body, if it's longer, you may end up being lower. If you have a short body, you're actually going to need to raise the bench up. But we're looking for that arm position. Once we get that, we're good to go. Second thing you need to know is that we actually don't want too much of you on the seat. We only want your seat bones. If you can pull your legs up without falling forward, then you know that you're actually too far back on the bench. Okay? So only this much. That's one of the big reasons that we need the next thing we're going to talk about, which is a footstool. Most kids under 10 for sure and often older actually can't reach the floor properly. And so what we need to do is we need to raise their feet up so that they can balance their weight on their feet and get in the habit of sitting properly. 
So you can put some books under their feet. Uh, you might use a footstool. Um, I have a special adjustable footstool, and if you do want to spend a little bit of money, I can tell you where to get that as well. Uh, my husband makes them, and there's also a place you can order them online. Um, so those are kind of your options, but that you can do it with as simple as a dollar footstool at Dollarama. Plastic is totally fine. You just need to make sure that their feet can rest comfortably on it. The other thing that you need to watch for is that you need to be in a forward and ready position. We want to think about riding a horse or sitting on a dirt bike or a bike and going up a hill or even walking up a hill. If we lean back, we're going to fall over backwards. We need to be leaning forward a little bit. We want our hands to be able to get up into the black keys without any problems. And we want to feel like our weight is coming forward onto our hands. To do that, we lean forward. Not too much, but it's going to be more than you think it is. So what I would like you to do is I would like you to take a picture and I want you to send it to me showing me your seating position because that way I can show you uh, or tell you what you need to do to change it or not at home. The next thing we're going to talk about is exercises and YouTube. So you're watching this video on YouTube, obviously, but you're also going to see some exercise videos on YouTube. These are important. They are how you remember how to do your exercises week to week, even if your mom or dad wasn't able to be at the lesson. And if you forget something, you can just go back and remind yourself. Those exercises are the very foundational part of my technical system. When you guys joined the studio, you all learned a little bit about the fact that I teach using the Russian School of Pedagogy and that I have some very specific ways of doing things that are a little bit different than you'll see in other lessons. And these exercises are part of that. You need them to work on being relaxed and playing healthy. So when I give you these exercises every week, I really need you to practice them. But even more importantly, I need you to make sure that you're thinking about practicing them and being relaxed while you practice them. They're to help you with that. They're not just there to do. So make sure that you have a parent help you and check to make sure that you're nice and relaxed while you're doing them and you'll be good to go. But if you forget, remember you can check the YouTube and see videos of all of those exercises and make sure you remember how to do them. The next thing we're going to talk about is how to use the notebook. So all of you guys have a notebook. Um, if you are able to, you'll be writing for yourself this year and it's actually going to help you remember how to use, uh, what to do a little bit better. If you're under 10, I'm probably still going to write your lesson notes for you. Um, and if you're online, I'll be sending you an email with your lesson notes every week. So how to use those lesson notes? First of all, if you're under 10, I want your parent to help you with your lesson notes, at least for the first couple days, because it might be a little bit hard for you to understand everything that's going on, okay? So I will write things in there like listening assignment, listen to um, In the Hall of the Mountain King, and then draw me a picture about what you think is happening. So that would be your listening and your imagination assignment. All you gotta do is look it up on YouTube and then listen to it and then draw your picture or write your story or whatever we're doing and then that part's done. Other things might also come up like um, exercises. So we just talked about the exercises. I might say please do the three note slur exercise as we did in lessons. So then you're going to practice that four or five times every day and if you forget what to do you'll check your YouTube uh, videos or you'll give me an email and then I will help you out. And then there's going to be your pieces, okay? So on your pieces, I will put the title 
so that you know what piece it is or the page number if you're in a method book. And then I'm going to write stuff like measure 13, uh, practice playing legato, or measure 10, practice breathing. Or I might write something general like uh, practice your dynamic contrasts. Or I might say memorize the first 10 bars. So what I want you to do is I want you to complete the list for each song before you play the whole piece every day. I would like you to, if I say practice measure 10, go practice measure 10 four or five times. Make sure you can do it correctly before you go on to the next thing. Then go to the next item on, on the list. Once you're done that, then you can play the whole piece through once or twice. The other thing I want you to do, I'm not going to write it in your notebook, but remember that most of your practice should be slow and careful. I want you to use your ears and your eyes to listen very carefully and um, figure out what the piece should sound like as you play it. So that's basically how you use your notebook. The reason you need your parents' help is because remembering to do all those things is a little bit tricky, and if you forget, they can help you. Alright, so the last thing we're going to talk about today is probably the most important part and this is the biggest reason you needed to watch this video with your parent. You and your parent and me are a team for your piano lessons. It's not just you and piano lessons, it's not just me as your teacher and it's not just your parent making sure that everything goes good, okay? We all work together and that's how we're going to make sure that you guys do awesome in piano. So, my job as a teacher is to make sure that you understand what to do during the week. That we go over things in your lesson, that I only teach you things that will work for you, that I push your learning in ways that are the best suited for you as a student. That's my part of the team. Your part of the team is to make sure that you practice every day, or five days a week anyway, that you complete what's in your notebook, if something's not working or something's going really well, that you tell me or your parent, well, probably both, to make sure that we know what's working so that we can make piano the best it can be for you. Your parent's job is to be your cheerleader and your coach and your practice bouncer at home. So I'm going to put a link to an article at the very end of this video. It's a really excellent article about 14 ways that we want parents to be part of the piano team. But what the parents role is, just in a little bit of a nutshell, is that they're going to listen to you play. They're going to sit down and they're going to check the notebook and make sure that you know what to do and you don't forget during the week. They're going to encourage you. They're going to remind you to practice and they're going to make sure that there's a good place for you to practice so that you don't get distracted. They're going to make sure that they set a practice routine so that you practice at almost the same time every day so you don't forget. And they're going to make sure that that piano time is just piano time, that there's nothing else for you to do or be doing during that time. And then when you're done your piano time, they're going to make sure that you don't think about piano for the rest of the day. We want you to enjoy practicing. So you want piano time and you want non-piano time. And that's the parents part of the team. The other thing they're going to do is they're going to help you listen to classical music. They're even going to probably learn some new things themselves. They're going to be your cheerleader. They're going to make it so that you can play over FaceTime or Zoom or in person for your grandparents and your aunts and uncles and anybody else that you might get to see. They're going to bring you to recitals. If we get to have concerts or something like that, they're going to maybe take you to a concert now and again. And they're going to be enthusiastic and they're going to tell you that you've done an awesome job when you work really, really hard at piano. So that's kind of how the piano team works. We need all three of us to make sure that piano goes the best it can. We need you as the student, and me as the teacher, and then your parent as the parent. And that's how we work together to make piano the best it can possibly be.